Good morning. <clears throat> our Sunday school lesson today is about sharing our faith. It uh, comes from 2 Timothy, the second chapter. Uh, it's a, a letter from Paul uh, trying to, to prepare Timothy for what he sees will be forthcoming in the near future for him. Paul was writing his, his letter from from prison, but really wanting to, to share his heartfelt message uh, and to kind of serve as a mentor for, for Timothy. <clears throat> you know, most of us is, have probably had some mentor along the way, someone whom we trusted, someone who was willing to take the time to help when we were frustrated worried or just trying to cope with the problems and situations of the moment. Uh, my high school Latin teacher was one of those people for me. In the classroom, he was a no-nonsense kind of guy. He challenged us to not only memorize vocabulary, but to be able to read excerpts from original Latin works and to write essays in a language that had been dead for centuries. <clears throat> he was also my homeroom teacher, and since my school bus was always the first to arrive, I'd usually be the only student in the room for 10 or 15 minutes before the other students entered. There we talked about sports, family, or whatever the events of the time seemed to occupy our minds. In my junior and senior years, he advised me about scholarship opportunities and encouraged me to involve myself in service projects, uh, and particularly uh, because they looked good on college and scholarship applications, but they also opened my eyes to the needs of others within my own community. When I became a teacher, I never adopted his practice in having students sit in organized rows of desks evenly spaced around the classroom. Compared to his room, mine was chaotic as we sat in a couple of circles in the middle of the room and talked about what we had read or were reading and evaluated one another's essays. But before and after class, my door was open for any student who needed help, advice, or extreme judgment. I will forever be grateful for a model teacher who had enriched my life. You know, Paul's letters to Timothy gives us a chance to hear the teacher trying to help prepare his student to share the message of Jesus with people who needed hope and purpose in a troubled world. We've probably all been in church services or situations where we've heard testimonies from missionaries or from fellow members of the congregation. Some have probably been moving and compelling and were unique to each person because no two people have the same story to tell. Paul's instructions to Timothy was to share what he had heard or learned about the Christian faith with others and then to pass that along to other people who had the skills to teach people that might follow them. Or as I once heard Grady Nutt say, each testimony reveals the chance for one beggar to show another beggar where he found bread. Well, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. <clears throat> so, my child, draw your strength from the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Take the things you heard me say in front of many other witnesses and pass them on to faithful people who are also capable of teaching others. Accept your share of suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Nobody who serves in the military gets tied up with civilian matters so that they can please the one who recruited them. Also, in the same way, athletes don't win unless they follow the rules. A hard-working farmer should get the first share of the crop. Think about what I'm saying. The Lord will give you understanding about everything. Remember Jesus Christ, 
who was raised from the dead and descended from David. This is my good news. This is the reason I'm suffering to the point that I'm in prison like a common criminal. But God's word cannot be imprisoned. That's why I endure everything for the sake of those who are chosen by God so that they too may experience salvation in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This saying is reliable. If we have died together, we will also live together. If we endure, we will also rule together. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are disloyal, he stays faithful because he can't be anything else than what he is. Remind them of these things and warn them in the sight of God not to engage in battles over words that aren't helpful and only destroy those who hear them. Make an effort to present yourself to God as a tried and true worker who doesn't need to be ashamed, but is one who interprets the message of truth correctly. Avoid their godless discussions because they will lead many people into ungodly behavior. And the key verse, So my child, draw your strength from the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Take all the things you heard me say in front of many other witnesses and pass them on to faithful people who are also capable of teaching others. You know, in, in verse 1, Paul <clears throat> reveals his close relationship with Timothy and indicates that he saw him as a son, a son that he wanted to encourage to remain strong because he could trust the grace of God to support him in his ministry. In the second verse, Paul refers to his personal teaching that Timothy had heard, and he encouraged him to continue to pass on the lessons that he had shared with others, with reliable people who would join them in accepting the leadership of the Holy Spirit as they would begin to share in instructing others. Paul wanted them to be capable and up to the task that God would set before them. In verse 3, Paul refers to his personal suffering and imprisonment and reminds Timothy of Jesus' willingness to bear the pain and hardship to lead others to salvation. Paul knew that Timothy would not be spared pain, but that his faith would let him endure it as he moved forward. Paul encouraged him to accept the role as a good soldier, following his commanded officer. And his commanding officer was Jesus. He was not literally referring to warfare, but to a disciplined obedience to Christ and to his deeds and to his doctrine. Well, verse 4 continues the imagery of the military commander who had previously enlisted the soldier and gave directions for believers to follow without distraction, to sway them from their Christian duties. He could not allow those distractions to take place. Timothy and others during Paul's time would have witnessed Roman soldiers and their devotion to their leaders in their lives and actions. In verse 5, Paul employs another familiar image, that of an athlete. The Olympic-like competitions that had become popular in, in Roman-occupied areas uh, allowed Paul to know that the participating athletes had to be careful that they would follow the rules in order to, to avoid disqualification. A 10-month period of disciplined training prepared the athletes for the competition, and each athlete accepted the rigid training regimen and the self-discipline to be physically and mentally ready for the games. Paul was urging Timothy for a similar self-discipline that his ministry would need. In verse 6, the metaphor of a farmer tending his field was the emphasis. Uh, to emphasize the, the hard work that it takes 
to produce a good crop. This was especially true in an era when there would have been no machinery to help the farmer with the manual labor that it would take. But Paul, Paul also pictured the reward that the faithful farmers could enjoy as a result of their hard work. Paul clearly wanted Timothy to know that the Lord would provide him insight and understanding to truly be an apostle. Verse 8 is a reminder that Jesus had already provided the example to follow and that his resurrection was the ultimate reward. But he also pointed out that there were false claims of the resurrection of other believers that had taken place. He also included the idea that the suffering that would accompany them in the present time would not and should not diminish the hope of glorification in the future. In verse 9, Paul continues to focus on the hardships he's faced and is facing, but he indicates that his experience has similarities to that of Jesus, and he seems to be predicting a death in which he will also be branded as a criminal. Even this image, however, has not caused him to stop proclaiming the gospel, and that the suffering that has come to him has not erased the effectiveness of his witness. He wanted Timothy to be assured that God's word was unbound and prison walls would never confine it. Paul next emphasizes his willingness to suffer for the sake of the elect, the people of God. He knew that no amount of personal suffering could diminish a future of his salvation that would lead to eternal glory. Verse 12 reveals that Paul expected Timothy to model the same endurance that he had demonstrated. Denial of self in order to follow the example of Jesus would allow Timothy to show and not merely tell of his faith. Next, Paul explains that Christ will remain faithful even as believers face rejection for faith or when false teachers and believers attempted to undermine the church in its teaching. He further adds that while God offered repentance, it did not mean that sinful actions would not have consequences. Verse 14 mentions controversies that would arise when there were battles over words. Paul insists that these petty squabbles could harm the effect to proclaim the gospel and convert non-believers. Timothy is then advised to seek God's approval by being the kind of worker that deserved approval. He would be measured by the quality and sincerity of his work ethic. Finally, in verse 16, Paul presents a warning about godless discussions. Any discussions that contradicted the truth of God's word had no value, and presenting incorrect doctrine could lead others to behavior that would displease God. And he wanted Timothy to remember how the Pharisees had attempted to trap Jesus, but each time Jesus would turn their question into a teaching moment and force them to realize the, that the intent of the question seem to convey their failure in following the will of God. Paul's advice to Timothy and his attempt to help prepare him for his role as an apostle should be guidelines for us to consider today if we are truly faithful to our responsibilities as members of the church. We continue to face temptations to be disloyal and we must resist those temptations individually and collectively as the body of Christ. It's our responsibility to share Christ's love through our words and deeds in our everyday interactions with one another. Lord Carey, a, a former Archbishop of Canterbury, warned believers that unless 
faith was shared and passed along collectively, that Christianity is only one generation away from extinction. That's pretty much the summary of Paul's remarks to Timothy. As they echo today, as we accept or decline a similar responsibility, we're that one generation preparing the next generation to stop Christianity from extinction. Let's pray together. Dear God, please guide us and help us to share our faith and to be your church in whatever we do and wherever we go. Help us to persevere even when we encounter sorrow and despair. And please enable us to allow your love to be evident in our lives.